Good morning. This is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. We're continuing on our series on bringing revival to your country, community, and especially to America. And we're um, going over uh, my book, Feed My People Joy, Kingdom Living for End Times. And okay, um, now, like I said yesterday, we're going to go over you being an ambassador. An ambassador, um, 2 Corinthians 5.12 says, We are ambassadors for Christ, for the anointing, for the presence, the power of God. This is the World Book Encyclopedia definition for ambassador. A representative of the highest rank by a ruler or king, king in parentheses there, my word, to another to speak and act on behalf of the government, an official messenger sent with an errand. Okay? Now, as an ambassador, you represent the qualities, traits, and habits of your home, which is heaven. You say what the king says, which is Jesus or God. You don't say any of your own words. Your message is his message because our citizenship is in heaven. Philippians 3.20 And Jesus said, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, you can't walk in God's authority and dominion of the kingdom until you're born again, until you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and receive his gift. There's two kingdoms on the earth, the kingdom of manna or money. And that's the devil's kingdom. He's ruling on the earth. That's why it looks like this. And Christians who are filled with Holy Spirit, who know they're the righteousness of God and walk in power, are supposed to take back this earth for God. Okay? Um, now, when you were saved, you were delivered from the power of darkness, which is Satan's kingdom, and you are translated into God's kingdom. So you went from Satan's kingdom to God's kingdom. And that's what it says. Delivered from the power of darkness... And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1.13. See, the kingdom of God is not a physical place. The kingdom of God that we're talking about is here now. There's also the kingdom of God is the place where God resides in heaven. But the kingdom of God on earth right now in us is in the Holy Spirit. And it's spiritual, not physical. And the spiritual overrides the physical. Everything created on this earth was created with substance called faith which is a spiritual substance that you can't see here taste touch or feel or smell but it's a spiritual substance everything physical was created with, by the spiritual <clears throat> okay um, the Holy Spirit is the power of the kingdom um, and that's Romans 14 17 for the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit and for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power that's 1st Corinthians 4 20 so the kingdom of God is in power, and it also says the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, so Jesus put aside all his godly attributes when he came to the earth. Uh, and you can look that up in Philippians 2, 7, Romans 8, 3. And I have lots of other places in my book here. You can look it up. And he came to your to the earth living as a man and filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is exactly what we're supposed to do. Uh, Luke 17, 21 says the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 12, 32 says it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Our job is to do what Jesus did and um, live on the earth as a king, uh, taking authority and dominion over everything that does not line up with God's word and God's will, just like it is in heaven. <clears throat> Luke 8, 8, 1, Jesus came preaching and showing the good news of the kingdom. The kingdom is good news because it's the power of God in you causing things on earth to line up with the things in heaven. If it's not in heaven, you don't allow it on earth. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. The, okay, what I was talking about earlier, Matthew 10, 7 and Matthew 9, 35, he says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Okay, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, same thing. Kingdom of heaven is in heaven which is in us through the kingdom of God. It's all God's kingdom. It's just one's in heaven and one's on earth. It's just different ways of saying the same thing. It's, um, okay, so, um, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what does the kingdom of God do? He says right here, it heals the sick, cleanses the lepers, it raises the dead. And this end time, raising the dead, is going to become an everyday normal thing and a really big thing. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. That's what the kingdom of God does and that's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and Luke 11, 12 and Matthew 12, 28 talks about casting out demons by the finger of God then the kingdom of God has come upon you. We are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head in heaven. We are the body on earth. And we are to be the ones doing it. 
Jesus is living in us and through us now. The kingdom of God is what empowers you to bring God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And the kingdom of God is the gospel of peace. That means nothing broken, nothing missing. Um, Ephesians 1, 22 says that um, we are the body of Christ and he put all things under our feet. And Colossians 1, 18 and 19 says that the fullness dwells in the body, which is the church. Matthew 28, 18 says that he's given us all power on heaven and earth because Jesus is in us. In him we live and move and have our being. And he has all power and authority in church, I mean, in, on the earth. And we're living on the earth as his representative. And he says, go into all the world, preach the gospel, and these signs will follow those who believe. Now, <clears throat> if you want to know, God says you can know them by their fruit. And if you see a preacher or evangelist doing something that you think is crazy or wrong or antichrist or the devil, ask yourself this question. This is, it says, these signs shall follow those who believe. So if they're having signs and wonders following them, then they are a believer. They believe. And ask yourself this question, do signs and wonders follow me? When I lay hands on people, do they get healed? Do you really believe? If you really believe, those signs and wonders will follow you. And also the signs and wonders will confirm the word. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Okay? In my name, they'll cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, and that is new tongues in two different ways. That's new tongues. In James, it says the tongue, tongue cannot be tamed, but God can tame it. And <clears throat> Babel and the Tower of Babel, our language was confused because we, could do, we, we became so evil and corrupt. But at the same time, we could create anything we thought in our mind to imagine, and God knew we would imagine evil things. So it confused our language. So our tongue is very, very important, and he gave us new tongues. We'll speak in new tongues. In other words... Our tongue now becomes a creative force with power behind it. What we say, we can have. What we agree with, we can have. If we speak to the mountain, it'll, it'll, um, be, uh, it'll be moved if we tell it to. We decree a thing and it, and it happens to us. Those kinds of new tongues. We don't have the old lying tongues that say, Oh, I feel sick, I feel sick. Well, then you'll feel more sick. We have the tongue that says, By the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. I might look, sm smell, taste, feel sick, sound sick, but... I am healed. Okay, new tongue speaks what the word says, agrees with the word. Okay, tongues also means speaking in the spirit um, because that's a weapon and power and tongues um, is a very, very powerful tool. Okay, let's get back here. I got sidetracked. Um, that was Mark 16 and 15. <clears throat> um, and you are sent into the world as God's ambassador to bring God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And those who have been given the abundance of grace, which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, shall reign in life as a king. That's Romans 5.17. You have the abundance of grace. So you have to understand your righteousness in order to rule and reign and have dominion on this earth. If you don't understand your righteous, you'll think you're a worm in the dirt and worthless nobody, nothing, which is a life in the pit of hell. And I go over the righteousness in another chapter. I just got so much. This is a 300-page book and has so much rich information in it. I carry it with me just so I can go back and review it. it it's, I'm not bragging. It's just that I was a tool used to write this book. But God wrote this book. And it is an awesome book, life-changing book. Um, and we're to bind and loosen as uh, agents and as ambassadors on heaven. We're to bind and loosen what we agree on earth. Not in heaven, but what we agree on earth we can have. And um, let's see, let's go over the rules of the, and the law of the kingdom. Uh, we have higher rules, higher laws that override natural earth laws. Number one, law. For the, all the law is fulfilled in one word, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself and love God as yourself. Galatians 5.14, words, the law, the spirit, life in Christ Jesus, Jesus became the word, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, you can have what you say. We talked about all this stuff a little earlier. Uh, the rules of the kingdom is walking in love. The words that you speak. Sowing and reaping is like the number one rule. Um, besides love, uh, Genesis 8.22 talks about that. Luke 6.23 and 45 and Luke 17.6 talks about faith being compared to a seed. The word is seed, and a seed always produces a harvest, and the harvest is fruit, but it all comes from your mouth. The, and the kingdom is compared to a seed. Luke 8, 5, and 18. 
The next rule is binding and loosening. We can have whatever we allow on earth and in our life God allows. And that's Matthew 18, 8. And he has given us authority over all the earth, Genesis 1, 26. There's no time in the kingdom. Um, God already provided everything that you need uh, before you were even born. Just like expecting mother gets ready for her baby and prepares, prepares everything. And so, according to his divine nature, has given us all has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That's Second Peter, one three. So you have everything that you need in order to not just preach, but demonstrate, show the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, that's it. Uh, I pretty much covered a lot of the stuff in that chapter uh, five on two kingdoms on the earth. Um, next, we're going to talk about how words rule in the kingdom, how important words are in the kingdom. Words are life and death. And my name is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.